happy on today's chat. I want to share uh, very vulnerably with you today from a season uh, that I walk through. You know, we all have our times. It doesn't matter who you are, what your age is, what your gender is, um, that we all go through things that we need to lean on our beloved. And I'm going to share very vulnerably with you how my hope and my faith were attacked in a season and what God did to bring me out. Okay. And then I want to pray for those of you who are suffering with hopelessness because you are in such an intense season right now. And maybe you have been for a while. And I want to know, I want you to know that I, I feel for you because I understand that. Okay. And I'm going to be praying for you. And uh, so let people know about this webcast. It'll help. But before I get into uh, the message of my own testimony, I want to uh, share with you about something coming up and just sharing my heart on it a bit is that God has given me a passion. Um, well, since I was 50 for kingdom business, um, but also in this season for God's people to rise up and really influence the different realms that we need to, to fill, the space we need to fill in society. And for me, one of the areas is uh, business. And so I have a kingdom business opportunity for any one that might be interested that I'm going to have like a living room chat online. So if I could, I would invite you into my own living room here to sit around with you, have coffee, uh, talk about kingdom business, talk about the Lord, talk about uh, the opportunity that I'd love to share with you. Um, but I can't invite you into my home. I can't invite you all into my home, but I can invite you into a living room online. So I'm hosting next Monday um, a living room chat is what I'm calling it to talk about a kingdom business opportunity and kingdom business principles. And it's just exciting because so many people are being blessed by it, um, being touched by the Lord and being uh, touched by great increase. And so I want to be able to share that with any of you, especially if you're thinking of starting up a business. Um, if you are, you know, just wanting to ponder different options for one, I'm going to be sharing with you this opportunity. So it's a free, uh, free, uh, event, but you have to sign up for it because we're going to send you the zoom registration so that you can, um, be involved in the Q and a, and we'll have an interactive setting. So pinned to the top of the comment section is the registration for that. And also in the description, at the bottom of the description, there is also the link for that. So I just wanted you to know that as far as an announcement right up um, off the top here. So let's have a word of prayer. And then I'm going to begin to share uh, my, my journey with you. And especially for those of you that need hope right now restored, I pray that this is going to be a refreshment for you. And I will pray for you at the end because I know God can change things. And I'm believing him to do that for you as he did it for me. So, Father, I'm just asking right now that you would uh, pour out your love upon all who are watching and your wisdom, your insight, your encouragement, that you would infuse them with faith. And that as I share, Lord God, that we would know that you are a God that walks us through our deepest, darkest um, times in life, and you will never leave us, you will never forsake us, and you always bring us through into a better place if we will lean on you. When we come out of our wilderness, we want to be leaning on our beloved. And so I thank you, Lord, for just pouring your blessing out upon all who are watching. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, I want to share with you, many of you know, um, my journey and my situation where my husband was diagnosed with Parkinson's. Uh, we started seeing symptoms actually probably around the year 2000, but they were subtle and they would come and go. And then by the time 2006 came, they were uh, becoming more evident, but he didn't want to go see a doctor and he would make excuses 
um, like, well, I was out playing tennis and that's why, you know, my shoulder, I probably put my shoulder out and that's why I'm a bit shaky here or whatever. Um, and when he was started to shuffle a little bit, well, it's just because, you know, my knees are bothering me from the golf game or whatever. And so I keep getting all these excuses and I could never get him to go and, and get these symptoms checked out. And then I started noticing that cognitively he was uh, forgetting things and he wasn't joining the dots and it was just bit by bit, you know, and I started thinking, man, this is not lining up very well. There's something not good here. Then I noticed he started lowering his voice and his countenance started becoming more um, subdued. In other words, not seeing much joy or expression on him that was part of his, his life. So one day, Stacy Campbell was over for dinner, actually, and she hadn't seen Ron for a while. And she said, you need to take Ron to the doctor. There's something really wrong. And it was just like, oh, she's my friend. She's my prophet. And she's an advisor to me. And I thought, this is my, my worst nightmare. So uh, we had Ron go to the doctor. I went with him. And his brother convinced him to go. Otherwise, I don't know if he, he would have gone. And uh, the doctor diagnosed him that day, said, beyond a doubt, this is without a doubt, your husband has Parkinson's. Now, I want you to hear something. An earthly diagnosis might be a fact, but it is not the truth. So let me unpack that for you. We are living in the realm of time in the earth. And in the realm of time, there are facts that are not carried through into eternity. For example, it might be a fact subject to time that um, there is uh, cancer cells, there is uh, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, um, MS, there's all these different diseases. There's poverty, there's lack. We see these things in the realm of time in the earth, but you will not see them in eternity. Why? Because eternity is only a manifestation of truth. God's eternity is only a manifestation of truth. So the scripture says that by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. So in an eternal perspective, it has been secured. So for example, let's say that we've lived with symptoms of something here on the earth. The moment that we pass over, take our last breath here, the next one there, those symptoms don't go because they don't enter the realm of eternity because um, truth prevails in eternity, okay? There's no sickness, no disease, no sorrow, no death, no, no depression, nothing like that. There's no poverty, there's no lack in the heavenly dimension. It's only here in the earth, okay? So we heard a fact that day from the doctor, but it wasn't the truth. So when you hear that kind of diagnosis, you have to align yourself with the truth and say, Lord, I'm going to commit myself to the truth and I will take care of the facts the best I can with whatever you lead us to do. But I have to align my soul with the truth. And we had to make a decision that day because it was heavy news. And we put our faith out for not only seeing a manifestation of healing and for kicking back on, on this attack on his body, uh, but also we put our faith out uh, for a cure as well as healing. And we started to believe God for that. Now, the nature of Parkinson's is that it is very debilitating and there's no cure for it. And it just gets worse and worse and worse. And so um, and no one really dies from Parkinson's, but from other things like infections or falls or whatever. Okay. So you could live a long time. You could, you know, most often at least 20, 20 years, you could live with it and you just get worse and worse and worse symptoms. Okay. And a lot of the symptoms are uncontrollable shaking and tremors and uh, cognitive issues, incontinence issues, um, not being able to walk or keep your balance, eventually not being able to feed yourself, not being able to move, not being, you know, having to be in a wheelchair, in a bed. I mean, it's just like the end of life for a Parkinson's patient, according to a fact, is not good. But we have the Lord. We have a promise. So we uh, remained in faith, 
looked after the facts. He went on some medication that helped him. And then in 2015, there was a procedure that he had uh, called deep brain stimulation, where they did brain surgery, went into his brain, and on each side put two stimulators in there, a pacemaker in his chest to control the battery of it and uh, the levels of it. And so he has not shaken since that surgery. It was a, an amazing discovery. And I want you to know that even though people might come up with the insight for it, the source of that insight is always God. So every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of Light, right? It's all from Him. It's not man's that smart. It's God is releasing knowledge. Daniel said in the end days, knowledge is going to increase. And so he had this surgery. It worked. All his shaking is gone. So he's he had violent shaking prior to that brain surgery, kept him up all night. Um, during the day, uh, he had tremors. He couldn't do things with the family. It was horrible, horrible, horrible thing to see him like that. But when he had the brain surgery, it fixed it. So he hasn't shaken since then, which we are very thankful for. Um, it was a, a fact that there was uh, some help for him. And then also a fact uh, that we had medication to help him with. So we did that. And we did our best to create a goal where he would have a beautiful day every single day as we're waiting for the manifestation of healing. We believe, according to the word, in the eternal level, he's already healed. And Jesus said, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so that's what we've been standing on, believing on, renewing our faith in every day, year after year after year. But year after year, there's been a decline. That's a fact, okay? I'm not talking about the truth because uh, in the eternal realm, it's just different and it's it's just um, so much more promising. So I'm just going to be very, very open with you. And some of you that are watching might have already experienced this. It was a painful, a painful journey. And especially, I'd say, over the last four to five years in particular, because I lost more and more of my husband. And things that we so enjoy doing together, like having prayer together. And my husband has amazing discernment. So I'd be able to sit and ask him his insights on something. And he would speak by the spirit of God. And he kept everything light. He, he never let me worry or be stressed out. He would keep me at peace. And, and he was funny. He would keep me laughing. And, um, and he was just, such a blessing around the home as a husband. My goodness, I couldn't ask for a better one. I was married, you know, we've been married for 51 years uh, th this March. And it's been a, a glorious 51 years, and mainly because of how beautiful Ron is. And, you know, he would get up in the morning and make breakfast for us every day, clean up after uh, when we would make dinner. I would most of the time do the cooking and he would clean up after me. But we do things like that together. We would travel together, work together, labor together. He loved um, helping behind the scenes. I mean, there like, you know, at a conference, he would be the, the first one there and the last one to bed at night uh, because he just loved serving. And he lost all that as Parkinson's caused him to decline and coming to a point in this last few years where it was so bad. And I'm just going to be open and vulnerable with you that um, he was uh, in, in bed. He would lose his, um, uh, lose his ability to think right. And he would, he would climb over bed rails that we put up for him to be safe with fall on the floor. We'd oftentimes have to have the fire department in to help get him back up because he was a dead weight and couldn't move uh, incontinent, grossly incontinent in bowel and in urine day in, day out, um, not able to communicate or talk well at all. Uh, you could hardly find him. There would be little periods where all of a sudden there he would be and he would connect. But for the most time, most part, he couldn't. He couldn't walk. He was in a wheelchair a lot or a walker um, and just shuffle like they have a Parkinson's shuffle, Parkinson's stare where you just stare out, but you can't really see the soul. It was a horrible thing. Um, 
And so this progressed and declined and, and came to its worst the end of last year and the beginning of this year. And I went into such a dark place because until that time, I would just put my faith out to believe for him to have a good day. I would believe for, okay, one day we're going to have a cure for this. There's going to be healing manifest one day. And um, I would oftentimes be out on the road and I think, well, maybe when I come home after this trip, he'll manifest his healing. So I would be encouraged with things like that until last year I got to a point where I was just declining in my hope and faith. And when you lose your hope and your faith, you go really dark inside. There's a there's a there's a hopelessness that that um, is like horrible. It is tormenting. And again, I'm going to be very open and honest with you is that my mind started going to places where it never should have gone. But I thought if he keeps declining like this, I don't know if I have the strength to look after him. And we already had uh, one worker that we had hired to help look after him because couldn't do it all on our own. And my assistant who already works as a full-time assistant was helping me as well. And we would take turns at night being up with him and losing our sleep all night. Um, I mean, and I thought, I don't know if I can keep going. What should I do? Should I lay down the ministry? Should I um, just look after him full-time and how much of this can I do um, without help because I wasn't strong enough to do it on my own. And there was all these questions and I, I even had to look into what would it take if I had to get him into a care center to be looked after. And I found out that it was like $10,000 a month. And it would also cost close to that to have someone come into the house and look after him, which would be my uh, preference if we had workers um, come in for a good part of the uh, week around the clock. And so I, I was just like in that dark place thinking, what am I going to do? And I saw myself as helpless. I saw myself as a victim. I saw Ron as a victim. I couldn't see him uh, getting better. In fact, all I saw was him getting worse because that's what I saw according to fact. And I lost sight of the truth. And when you lose sight of the truth, it puts you into a place of hopelessness, and that's where I, I got. So I would step into faith to do what I had to do, but honestly, I was in like a burnout with, um, with this whole situation, and I just every day said, God, as my as my days are, so shall my strength be. You're gonna have have to help me get through. And by faith, I was able to walk through every day, but there was a loss of hope in the midst of it. If that makes sense to you. Now, I know that some of you that are watching, you're in the same place. I have such an appreciation for caregivers that I never even understood fully all that care, caregivers did and the emotional weight and the physical stress and everything that goes with it and the financial stress. I never understood that before um, like I do now in the measure that I do now. And I just have so much compassion for those of you that are caregivers and especially for those who have given your all but it doesn't get any better and you feel like powerless because that's what I felt I felt powerless and um and there's sometimes that I didn't even have a good attitude or a loving attitude I was frustrated and didn't know which way to turn and then I would condemn myself for for being frustrated right and so it's this cycle where you feel so beaten up, not only by circumstances, but by your own victimization and the way that you treat yourself. And I know that some of you are there and I'm going to pray for you that that lifts off of you. So one of the things that I have to say um, that is the biggest help ever is prayer. And I know that many of you that are watching right now, you have prayed for me and my husband for years. I don't know how I can thank you because we know that God is our healer. And if there's something he uses like a brain surgery or a medication or whatever, that's awesome, right? But he's behind it. He is ultimately the healer. And when you pray to him, he goes to work. And I want to thank you for our family being sustained. My assistant, many of you have said, I pray for your assistant all the time. We wouldn't be able to make it through without those prayers, what we've been through. 
And so if you're in need um, right now because of your caregiving situation or the hard place that you're in where you've lost hope, the first thing is to get prayer. Um, call ministries with prayer. Get yourself on prayer lines in our uh, web church. We have a whole team that intercedes for the prayer requests that come through because people need prayer. And so find a ministry, your local church, and, and don't be afraid to say it. Say, I need prayer. And everywhere I go, I hear people say, I pray for you and your husband all the time. And I can't tell you what that means. We would have never been able to get through, especially with the schedule I have in addition to caregiving, I would have never been able to do it without prayer. You are amazing. And I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. So I want to encourage you to get prayer, but I also want to believe with you for a turnaround in your faith and, and your hope, because when you lose your hope with it, which is your expectation for something good to happen. And that's what I lost. I could only see oh, this has been getting worse for 20 years and it's probably going to keep getting worse. And I'm just going to have to figure out a way to cope with this because he's just going to get worse. And I lost sight of a joyful expectation. And the joy of the Lord is your strength. You have to find your hope again. And I am really believing that you are going to find your hope. And I want to read to you some scriptures. Romans 15, 13. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Micah 7.7, 7, therefore I will look to the Lord and I will watch in hope, in joyful expectation for the God of my salvation. He's going to come through. My God will hear me. Come on, take hold of this. Jeremiah 29.11, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. And Isaiah 40, verse 31, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary and they will walk and not faint. And that's who you will be when you put your hope, your joyful expectation in the Lord. Well, even in times when I couldn't stir my hope, other people stirred it for me. And we received a call um, about a month and a half ago now from a good friend of ours in Belize called Scott Sturm. He's a missionary. He's been there for 40 years almost, I think. We went down there in early 1980 as missionaries and that's where we met Scott and we had brought his wife down with us on our team and and. I mean, they weren't married then, but they got married and they've been on the mission field ever since. And he's a stellar man of God, very righteous and very humble and has laid his life down for the nation of Belize and for the next generation. And he called us and he said, I just have to, I just had to call you because a friend of mine who's a minister in the U.S. Um, heard about um, this product. It's a, it's a, you know, like, like how you would take a vitamin C or something like that that will enhance your health. It's a health enhancement item. And he had a friend with Parkinson's. So we thought, I'm just going to buy some for him and see what happens. And as he started using this, the symptoms started to lift. Now, I'm not saying there's no medicine in this product or anything. We're not saying it heals anybody. I'm just telling you the testimony, okay? So this man starts using it and his symptoms start retreating. So my friend says, I know someone in Belize that I'm close to that is fighting Parkinson's. So I'm going to get some of this for him. So he bought some of that product for him, got him trying it. And that man's symptoms started to improve. Well, then uh, he was so excited because he knew that Ron had been fighting Parkinson's. So he called us and he said, you really need to try this. I really want you to try this. And I'm going to be honest with you, when we first got diagnosed, there were so many people wanting to help us. They were offering us product after product after product. And we did try a lot of them initially, but then we got tired, you know, of 
seeing no results, putting a lot of money out. Some of them were very expensive. Some of them like $400 a month, $500 a month, $250 a month. And it just got so expensive and we weren't seeing the results, even though it looked like there was um, promise to it. So we just kind of closed our heart to it. But because of who it was that spoke to us, we thought, well, let's give this a try. And I was surprised that my husband really wanted to try it. So we did. Well, and again, there, like, I just want to say, this is not medicine. Um, it is not anything that, that um, we can put a claim on that heals anyone or anything like that. Um, you know, sometimes if you take a vitamin C and you feel better because you took it, you know, that's what I'm talking about. I'm just telling you what happened after we started with this product. So um, my husband, the first day, he all of a sudden has a lifting of his countenance. And again, when you have Parkinson's, you have this Parkinson's stare and your, your countenance is like dull, subdued. And all of a sudden he starts brightening up. Well, then the next day, his personality starts coming out like almost all days, joking again and stuff like that. And then the fourth day I was hosting an event and having an after party after, and he was out socializing, walking without a walker because he had to walk all the time with a walker. He's walking without a walker in full balance, everything going well. And he's visiting with people, remembering names, where they're coming from, joking around, laughing. And he was the last one to bed that night. And the incontinence issue over time, he started improving um, where he wasn't being incontinent like, like he was. He was having more command over his um, uh, bowels and his urine. And uh, he wasn't doing the shuffle anymore. You know, and this all happened within, within a month of taking, um, taking this, you know, trying it. So again, I'm not like God is our healer. Okay. And I'm just giving all the glory to him, but I'm just saying it brought hope back to me to see my husband come back again, praying together with me again, leading in prayer again, having his discernment quicken again. And it was like, I got my hope back. And I thought, God, you're answering the prayers that we have you know, sent to you and he will answer our prayers. And we don't know when or how, but he will answer your prayers, whatever you are facing right now. And it could be maybe a health issue like what we were facing. Maybe it's a relational issue. Maybe it's a financial issue. But I'm telling you, God will answer your prayers. He will. And have hope. Now, just that little bit of improvement put hope back in me. So I got happy again. And I started dreaming again of what it would be like when he's completely free of all manifestation of this horrible illness. What is it going to be like when people are cured of this? I started to dream big. So then I started to do some research into the product and it's based on stuff that I don't know much about. Honestly, it's based on light therapy and about your own body, just getting healthy itself. And because God does create the body to look after itself, right? It's, it's supposed to heal itself. That's why we have immune systems and things like that. And, and uh, stem cell uh, uh, rejuvenation and re regeneration, all that stuff. So I'd started to do a little bit of study into the, the, the science of all these subjects and that it was fascinating to me and found that there was many people who had been sharing testimonies of awesome improvement of, symptoms that could be like um, people that had been athletic and hurt themselves or um, different um, illnesses, long-term illnesses. And it's just like, I thought, God, you, you can heal anything. And again, I'm not putting my trust in a, in a product. I'm putting my trust in God, but he can give the technology for the product. So I started seeing, wow, there's people with great testimonies from this. It's a company that's been around for a long time. It's many Christians. The founder is Christian and received downloads from the Lord in it. And uh, there's thousands of doctors involved in the company that are uh, cheering it on and that. So I started reading all these reviews and I thought, and, and of course you got the na naysayers out there too, but for the most part, it, it was like really 
incredible. It was beautiful. So I, I bought some for myself as well and started using it. And then I started noticing more energy, uh, mental fog, clearing up. You know, it was just awesome what God was doing um, just by being touched by the answer to prayer, but also through some supplements and and, and things like that. And then I noticed that in the business um, aspect of this company that many people were being really blessed with um, a secondary stream of income, some smaller amounts, but many um, just off the charts making a lot of money, like, you know, over a hundred thousand a year. There was people that I know personally that made that in their first year or so. And so, and I know like for my heart, I have a heart for widows. And so I've been able to direct most of mine to some people that the Lord has assigned me to that I wanted to help. And uh, one of them honestly is uh, in their first month has made almost $20,000 of income in their first month. And I'm thinking, this is crazy. But, you know, God promises health and wealth. Now, I'm not saying that this for you. I am going, going to share on um, a uh, business opportunity, a ki kingdom business opportunity to do with this for anyone that's interested in it, okay? Um, this is only for those that might be interested in learning more, asking questions, you know, having a, a living room chat. And so I'm doing a living room chat. Um, on Monday the 22nd, it'll be at 1030 in the morning, but we will record it so you can get it if you can't watch it live. But you have to register for it because I want to be able to send you the Zoom link so that you can have the interaction with it. Okay, so if you want to know more about that, just sign up for that. And, and if you can't watch it live, you will get the replay so that you can watch all the information on that and how you can get involved. If that's something that you think that you might be interested, if you're desiring to make an extra income stream, or if you want to start your own business, because um, the way I see it, there's actually no startup cost in it. It's kind of crazy. I'm a businesswoman. I've started many businesses, but I've never seen anything like this. So it's awesome. And so, uh, yeah, be sure to register for that right now if you want to be a part of that. And um, and just see what God does. See, see how God leads you. But what I want to do now, moving off of that, I want to pray for those of you who have lost your hope. And I want to pray that God stir your hope again in whatever area you need it. Because there's something about that joyful expectation. When you have that stirred again on the inside of you, it the world changes. I, I believe there's someone watching that you've lost your hope to ever be married. You know, and, and you for years have had this almost like a, a painful desire, like because you want it so bad, but it, but it hasn't come about. And so hope deferred has made your heart sick. You lost your expectation. But it only takes one suddenly to see that turn around, right? And the Bible says you freely receive so you can freely give. So if I've received fresh hope, I have fresh hope to give you, right? I want to give you hope. Nothing is impossible in the Lord. And I mean, if you're being led to lay something down, he will give grace for the journey for sure. Like there was grace given to us in my journey, even in my darkest, darkest hour. God's grace was there to get us through every single day and to be able to care for my husband every single day. I had grace and he will always give that grace. But there's something about when a ray of light comes in and you get your hope back again. It is so amazing. And I, I just so want that for all of you. Some of you have lost hope that you'll ever be reconciled, maybe to a family member or to a friend. Maybe you've lost hope that you'll ever be healed from an emotional trauma in your life. Maybe you've lost hope that you'll ever be able to get financially secure. But you see, God, he can work all those things together for good. Maybe you've lost hope that you can be restored into a place where, where you can fulfill your destiny. All things are possible in the Lord, and he's got a way 
And it's through Jesus Christ. He is your way. So I'm going to pray right now for all of you who need your hope restored. And you might even want to know, um, just write in the um, subject or the uh, comment line, what you want your hope restored in. Say, I need hope restored for finance. I need for, for help. And you don't have to say specifically what it is if you don't want to. But when you write it down, we're going to bring those before the Lord. And we're going to ask him to saturate you with fresh hope and make you alive because he's going to give you wings like eagles and he's going to bring a wind, a fresh wind up underneath you and give you hope. I feel like a new person now. I feel like I've gone to a new level of, of faith even because of the hope that I've been given. And you know, every day is not perfect with my husband. In fact, we had to have some um, uh, surgery done on him and the anesthetic affected him a little bit. And so it's like more, you know, fog, but I didn't lose my hope when I saw it. I thought, no, we're going to get through this and right back on track. And, you know, I don't, I don't care if there's a moment here where it's not perfect or a moment there. I'm just believing that, that, that there's been a turnaround. I even said to my assistant, I said, you know, if it doesn't even get any better than this, I'm happy just to see the improvement, to find my husband again, to connect with his soul again. I am so happy about that. I am so revived, okay? And I know that there's more, and there's more for you. So let's pray. I want you to bring your heart before the Lord. And... Um, I want you to forgive those who have maybe been negative towards you and any way that you have had wrong attitudes yourself. There was times in that dark place I had wrong attitudes. There was times I had to repent from not being loving like I wanted to be. And you can't be hard on yourself. You have to bring it to the Lord and let him hold you and cuddle you and tell you he understands and absorb the pain of it and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Amen. So if you have a bitter attitude, a resentful attitude, a unloving attitude or whatever, or impatience, all that can go to the cross and you can be, be revived again. Okay. And I think, you know, as caregivers, we do, we do get tempted with those things. We don't want to be, but we do. I was maybe you're a lot stronger than I was, but I got tempted with those things. But God was there to help me overcome and to forgive. Here's someone needing to be um, have hope for meaningful employment and family relationships and finding fulfillment of destiny. Absolutely. Put the whole list of it on there because our God's big enough to fulfill it. And I don't know how he's going to do it. Maybe it's through some medicine or a medical technique or a health product, or maybe it's through someone connecting with you relationally that will give you an opportunity. I don't know how he's going to do it, but he has all different ways of doing it. He might give you an opportunity that you never even dreamt was possible. Okay. But your hope's going to get restored. I want you to start thinking about the goodness of God and what he can do because it can turn around. And I'm believing this for be your turnaround year. Okay? So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my friends. Lord God, I know what it's like to be in that dark place where you've lost hope and you're only seeing the negative things in a situation and you don't have faith to get yourself out of it. But Lord, you are bigger than it all. And I ask, Lord God, that you right now would shine down as everyone's ray of hope right now and that you would encourage them and bless them and empower them in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that you are bringing encouragement to the heart because you are the God of all encouragement. And I break the power of hopelessness in Jesus' name. And I speak hope into everyone here. And if they need healing, oh, Father, you are our healer. Jesus, your Jehovah Rapha, our healer. Send healing to them. Send wholeness. Send health. You are also our financier. You are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. I release your provision to them. Lord, you are our restorer. And I release your restoration. You're the God who restores. You're the God who reconciles. Lord, I pray for, for you to fulfill destiny where, where, where they've lost sight of it, Lord. Just come as a ray of light into their lives. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 
And I'm just believing that you're going to be refreshed. That's what revival is all about. And he wants to revive you right now. The spirit of revival is here for you right now and for whatever you are facing. And so may you be revived and may you find your joy in him again, because he has a future and a hope for you that is absolutely beautiful. He is good. And you're not a victim of past sorrows, but you are a victor and will walk into your future with joy, with expectancy, with new vision. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Well, again, if you want any uh, uh, information, we'll put the slide up again for the living room chat that I'm going to be giving. If any of you are interested in hearing about a kingdom business opportunity, um, you can register online. And we pinned the registration to the comment section and put it also in the description. So you can register there for the Zoom. If you can't make it live, uh, it's recorded. And we will send the recording out to everyone who has registered. So God bless you. And thank you so much for uh, joining me on today's live stream. And remember this, that God loves you with an everlasting love. He really, 